record. It's working, it's working. Um, hi everyone, I'm Molly Lambert from Simply Raw Feeding, Simply Raw Interviews for the Raw Feeding Vet Society. Um, and I'd like to welcome Dr. Bella O'Connell, who is going to be doing a talk at our conference on the 19th of July in Wales um, for Are You Raw Curious? So welcome, Bella. Thank you so much for taking time out, actually on a bank holiday Monday. Um, um, yeah, welcome and thank you for giving up your time. And how did you how did you begin your journey of raw feeding? Well, it's a pleasure to be here, Modi. Thanks for, for uh, interviewing me today. So we can just talk a little bit about my talk um, on on uh, at the conference. And um, I suppose I've always been lucky enough to be offered fresh food right from a child and the um, animals that we've always had have always been fed appropriately for the species so um, with the sort of food that they would naturally eat um, rather than going into a commercial process situation and I, I'm sure that's influenced me but equally as a vet um, of 23 years now um, I've seen the sort of result of getting it right and how incredible it can be and how powerful it can be just getting the um, the food right for the pets that we we see come through our doors. Absolutely. I mean, it just doesn't it doesn't make anything other than sense to me that we should feed a, an animal a species appropriate food rather than processed rubbish, which we do. We, we're told the whole time about for our own health, but sadly, the. The pet industry is a little bit different. Anyway, I'm not here to be rude about anyone. Um, so you're okay, going to... I, I do actually have to um, deliver the information to clients as, as they can accept it. So it's very much a nuanced um, consultation that we have. I have with people. I There's no dogma. And if people can't abide the thought of raw because they're vegans or they just can't be handling it or they are extremely worried about immunocompromised um, disease in the family or for themselves, then we just walk, we walk them through what they can do to improve things. So it isn't always about the, the purest approach. It's, my talk is going to be about how to help people get as close to what they need to do to help the pet and also the owners, because obviously if things improve, they're more than happy and in fact delighted when that does happen with such a simple approach and it doesn't cost them anything to do it. They've got to feed the animal and that's half the battle is helping people understand that we're not gonna run thousands of tests or cost them a fortune in, in this, that and the other medication. And that's also not to say that I wouldn't use them if they were necessary, because I do. And that's the other thing I'll talk to people about. There'll be many medications that will be familiar to people that I use to help people get to the place where they can stop using them. That's really sounds really exciting, and I totally totally get that. Not all not all raw is good, and there are so many people out there who worry about all the all the pathogens and all the bacteria in in raw feeding. Um, <clears throat> but it's all about an education, I believe. It's a it's about planting the seed, and then that seed can grow. Um, about about nutrition and the things that yes. as a collective bunch of people we we are so deeply passionate about. Um, yeah. So yeah, I think it's just sowing the seeds in in small in small ways, and just people suddenly go, "Wow, that's amazing! My my dog's got better because I've fed it um, a non processed food." And it's that simplicity, isn't it, that you quite rightly mention? And medication in some instances is is and does work, but obviously to a minimal if we if we're being purists. Um, yeah. So give us a few little pointers. We're not going to do a very long chat today because. Um, this is obviously is a promotional thing for the for the conference, but um, just a few little exciting things about what you're going to talk about in Are You Raw Curious? For I think we talked about it earlier when we spoke about predominantly for vet nurses who are fundamental to that um, <clears throat> very point in in your in your clinics, I guess. Yes, it's it's the the talk is aimed at general practitioners and vet nurses anybody who talks to clients regularly about nutrition. I suppose vet nurses in particular talk about weight clinics and try and help people in that way, not normally to give nutritional advice about 
proteins and fats and carbohydrates, that sort of thing. But they get very involved and I think are very interested in trying to do the best they can. And in the clinic I work at, if somebody in a weight, with a weight clinic, a nurse with a weight clinic isn't succeeding, they'll come to me and we can talk about how we can shape that um, approach and tweak it so it's a little bit more successful. Um, Labrador's rule, very high on that list. <laughs> Um, and yeah and we'll talk also about <clears throat> genetic predispositions to disease and how whilst they have predispositions if you get the foundational health right they needn't manifest those genetic predispositions so I think it's important that people know that okay so it might be a Labrador and they're prone to weight gain but doesn't mean they need to get fat and very often when you get the nutrition right that is so helpful to the owners who've been struggling for years, mm. trying to reduce it on a low calorie this, low calorie that, high fiber this, high fiber that, and not succeeding and getting very disillusioned and then giving up. So mm. we talk all about how to manage the consultation, nuance the actual approach to each individual and, and allay fears. And I, <laughs> one thing I always like to say to people is, you're worried about raw meat. Well, do you, first of all, do you eat meat? And then they say yes or no. And I say, so how do you handle that? Well, we wash our hands and sensible hygiene measures. And then I go on to say, what do you reckon your dog's sniffing in the park every day? And you know what? The bugs they're sniffing are so much worse. And we, you know, after a while, they, the enzymes in their saliva and all the oral health that they have from being in a good, good, healthy state means that everything's as safe as it's going to be. Um, possibly more so than the, the, the animals who are sadly not on a species appropriate diet and are more prone to inflammation, leaky gut and all these other things that go go along with it. That, that makes so much sense, Bella. <clears throat> and I think I think over the years I've I've learned that people who feed kibble um, are less likely to wash the bowl afterwards because, of course, it looks clean. And I think there are more recalls for salmonella in, in, in kibble fed dogs because of that very thing. Because people who feed a fresh, raw food diet, we do. We, we just think, OK, well, I'm preparing meat, therefore I'm going to wash everything with hot soapy water. And we do exactly the same with our bowls. So I think our protocol for, um, for being clean is, is better if you feed a fresh diet, which is extraordinary, isn't it? Yeah, that makes I think that's true of, of, of a lot of people. Yeah, I think of members of my family who occasionally feed gibbon. The bowls are not clean and they're left down sometimes. And you think of everything that's ending up in it. Um, and also, of course, the way things are stored, you know, fresh food is either frozen or kept in the fridge and, and certainly in, in a very sort of hygienic fashion, probably in Tupperware to try and make sure it doesn't, you know, meats aren't next to vegetables and that sort of thing. It's just usual common sense stuff, really. Absolutely. Um, Absolutely. I keep my dog food in Tupperware boxes in the same fridge as myself and my family. And we've never we've never had any issues because we apply no, like sense of quality and it does it does it does terrify some people but hopefully your your talk will will be helpful to make people feel a little bit more comfortable about that and there's also brendan's wonderful raw safe <clears throat> which is absolutely fantastic and i wish more companies would come on board with it but i'm sure they will in time but it's just common sense and logic isn't it yes yes i'm hoping that i can just explain to my colleagues how I approach it which will give them like some ideas as to how to approach their clients uh, and that's the main thrust of the whole thing really it's not to necessarily convince people um, that they have to do this and the other because as I say no dogma because I think that's really unhelpful and the walls go up um, people don't like being bullied um, and we've got to work with people because we've all got very different influences and 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 things that have happened for us in our journey through life and we've got to respect that. Absolutely. No, I totally, totally, totally agree. Well, it's exciting. I'm very much looking forward to your talk. Um, and um, hopefully it's given people a few pointers about what to expect because it's going to be an exciting weekend. Um, and I know this is a recorded one, but if anyone's got any questions when it goes on the Facebook group, please feel free to ask and we will do our very best to answer any questions. And I'm sure Bella will be the same too. So thank you. I don't think we need to do um, any more long ones because it's going to be exciting. Can't wait. Um, 
So thank you for your time, Bella. And um, I very much look forward to your talk. And thank you so much for supporting us because without you guys, it would be not as easy as it is. And we just need to keep on promoting our wonderful Royal Feeding Vet Society and species appropriate feeding, I think. Yeah. Does that make well, sense? I, hope, I really hope that more people will come to a better understanding and then support the cause too, because the, the results I see are astonishing. So I, yeah. I really hope people will, will be interested enough to to take the time i'm sure they will i'm sure they will anyway thank you i'm going to press stop in a minute um so yes thank you very much for your time and um we'll look forward to your talk thanks noddy